Hey all, and welcome to episode 16 of the Unseen Strands podcast, a crochet and fiber arts related podcast where I, your host Mo, am visually impaired and will be sharing with you strands of the rest of my life. I come to you from central Iowa where I live with my husband, our four boys, our two cats, and our dog. And I'd like to say welcome to anyone new to our little family here as well as a hearty welcome back to anyone who is returning this week. I apologize in advance. This is probably going to end up being a really long podcast and is probably going to take place over different days of recording. So just warning of quality control. Yeah, it's it's probably going to be all over the place as, well, when I can record by myself, I can't always record or I guess control the air conditioning coming on and off. Hopefully that will be a thing of the past fairly soon because it sounded like it was going to actually cool down this week, I think after today. But yeah, we have so many finished objects to share with you. And so I was going to focus this episode on the finished objects because as many of you know, I was racing to finish off objects last month for all the cows because everything has to end at the end of August. All the summer cows ended. Well, a lot of summer cows ended as well as just monthly things and bi-monthly things. And I think that's what it would be. It'd be bi-monthly if it's for two months, right? Um, <laughs> but yeah, so many of the cows ended, so, so many things to share with you that we have finished, well, I have finished over the last couple of weeks. It's only been a couple of weeks, but oh my gosh, are there so many things to share with you. So anyways, let's get started. To start off, I will share with you my Landa Silks. I'm going to try and remember to tell you, like, all the cows. Hmm, maybe not, because I'm not even going to remember all the cows that I entered everything into. But yes, this is my Land of Silks project. I'm starting this off because it's one of those things that I pretty much made up the pattern for myself, so I don't have to cross-check my information. <laughs> um, I used a Juniper Moon Farms color. Uh, this is the Stargazer line, and I believe it was Ryan for the colorway. I know that is in my project notes over on Ravelry, so you can always uh, double check me there. It was a nice gray color. This, again, was a Christmas present that will be going to one of my husband's co-workers who is in love with llamas, and this yarn is a... Um... 60? 40 llama silk blend, I believe. Sorry, again, <laughs> I'm trying to do this without notes, and yeah, I know it's llama for most of it, and then the smaller percent was silk, but I just don't remember. I think it was 60 40. But yeah, I used a G hook for this project, and I did that with a alternating two row pattern. It's just uh, X stitch, and then it alternates with single crochets. So I called this scarf my X's between the lines since all the rows of X's are between rows of single crochet. And the really nice thing about this was that since I had one skein to work with and I didn't want to get any more <laughs> to work with, I really could do this pattern for as long as I had yarn. So I probably had maybe two yards left at the end and I pretty much decided that I could not get another full repeat of both rows so I called it good and finished it off. Sorry about that I got a little bit interrupted but this is a uh, about four foot long scarf it is on the shorter end and I probably would have made some fringe for it but like I said I used the entire skein basically up and there was not enough left in my, what I couldn't make it across to make, you know, another repeat that wasn't enough to make fringing either. And it's about five inches across. 
I probably would have made it a little wider except for I know one of the patterns that I had looked at for a cowl because I wasn't sure at first if I was making a scarf or a cowl because I didn't know how long it would turn out and it had said to use about 25 maybe 22 it was something kind of skinny like that for a cowl and so that's what I had based my width off of and so yeah I had done about 24 stitches across for this one. Well, okay, about. I used 24 stitches across. <laughs> and just like for the X rows, I have a double crochet on each end and then the X stitches in between that. And I think that's about it on the scarf. I think it'll go over well. And yeah, one Christmas present down. I've been really bad about actually gifting Christmas gifts and things out so I'm hoping that this is done and I can put it away and that also went for a uh, Christmas in July cowl cal sorry getting confused because I'm getting interrupted with messages again um, this went in a Christmas in July and August thread I forget which group that was with um, and I put it, well, there's my couple that just are for any project you make, like Geeky Girls and Silver's Dreamland. And Dramatic Knits has anything you complete in the month, you can post your finished object. And there was a Summer Stash Down, so this went into that one. That one was has been closed, and she did pull for prizes, and I did not win anything. Boo-hoo. So far, I haven't won anything from the cows that have closed and have bowled for prizes. Um, what's the other one? Oh, Knitting I Love? I think. I think that was the other one that had a just anything you make kind of thing it went into. And there was... Uh, I don't... I don't know if I counted it for stash or shelf because I made up the pattern, so I consider that kind of a using pattern from library. And I think there's a tiny, tiny human that's had another one. And it might have been in that. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, that was my X's Between the Lines scarf. Okay, now moving on to FO number two. Uh, Jeremy is home now and is doing chores, so all that clattering around is him putting dishes away. <laughs> um, I finished my weaving project. Not a whole lot of uh, meters or yards or whatever for the um, Knit Girls stash down, but at least it was some. This is all just remnants of cotton yarn. Some of it, I think, was stuff that I'd been given, so I assume that it is sugars and cream, but it may not all be sugars and cream. It could have some peaches and cream or, you know, whatnots. And this I made on my new little loom that I shared in my clearance buying uh, video, or I guess I shared it in my previous podcast, and it was in one of them. I'm not sure if it was in the last one or the one before, but I shared that I got a cheap loom from Walmart in their clearance and so that's you know basically just a little cotton coaster hot pad just something little <laughs> it's only let's see one two three four five six maybe seven inches wide which it's supposed to be a 10 inch loom but I don't know how you would get 10 inches across and I didn't do it on the widest setting. So I have one, two, three, four, probably about five inches high. So it's a little bit rectangular. But from what I had researched in weaving, this is tabby stitch and nothing really special about it. Other than it is a FO for uh, stash dash and all that yarny goodness. <laughs> Just another craft to add to the stash. To my finished object, number three, this is my spinning project. I'm actually currently detangling this as I am recording, which I probably will be detangling 
the entire time I am recording. For some reason, my Hank job was really terrible, even though I thought I did a really good job of putting in um, the ties. And I don't know, something didn't stick or didn't get through all the layers or something because when I went to stretch it or dry it or whatever, after letting it set, it just absolutely like fell apart. <laughs> there was a good chunk of it that was a lot longer than the rest of it and I couldn't uh, fix it. <laughs> so yeah, I'm. it was a horrible mess and I couldn't find the end. And so yeah, sorry, I think Sam's home now. <laughs> so yeah, this this ended up being kind of a mess. Sorry again about all that racket. Um, now we have toys that are going off randomly. Uh, this spin I did as a two ply. It came out to be, I think, at the lighter fingering weight end. It is a 100% bamboo for one ply, and then the Peter Iredale that was the June ex well. I don't know if it's exclusive, but the June, one of the June fibers in the Fiber of the Month Club box. Both those fibers I did get from Paradise Fibers. And yeah, I made a two ply. I got over 600 yards. I can't remember exactly what it was. Um, and so hopefully, my bamboo was a lot smaller, or I didn't get as much out of it as the Peter Iredale. So I have a lot of the Peter Iredale left, whereas I did not have any of the bamboo left. And so my finished weight was only a little over six ounces instead of eight-ish ounces like I was expecting to get. But I think this will still make a good yarn and Hopefully it will be plenty for some project, although I have not picked one out yet. The Peter Iredale colorway, or I guess fiber, is a flax silk merino blend. I don't remember the exact uh, <laughs> fiber, or the exact amounts of each fiber that is in that. But yeah, so that is my spin. And this project was mostly for the Tour de Fleece, which is runs with along the same timeline as Tour de France. And so that is during the month of July for the most part. I mean, it's all during the month of July, but it's not the entire month. I think it's something like 17 days or something. It's a lot longer than I thought it was. I thought it was like a week or something. But yeah, it was from, I believe, July 7th through the 29th. And I did not finish in that time, the spin, but I did get most of it done. I was still working on doing the bamboo during the uh, tour, and then I didn't get to plying it until later on in the month of August. But yeah, so that is it, I guess, for my, I call this my China Sea, since the Peter Iredale was a sea inspired yarn and then the bamboo is of course makes me think of pandas but panda didn't really work so <laughs> we're gonna go with china for our other works i thought that kind of and there's that china blue color and i think that kind of also would work in here so yeah i decided to call it my china sea spin and as life is with Lots of little boys <laughs> coming home from school and waking up from nap time. We now have both the littles up and they're both playing with things that make noise. <laughs> so good luck to you. <laughs> um, FO number four was I finished Jeremy's. I don't know where he went and so I'm not for sure if he's in earshot or not. <laughs> but I finished the snow cone stand blanket. I actually got this into the dryer earlier today, so I will be, again, putting away another thing for a Christmas gift. And this was, again, using the snow cone, 
This was using Yarn Bee's Sugar Wheels in the color Snow Cone Stand. And this has almost entirely seven cakes. There was a tiny bit left over, but not enough to finish a row. And I think it changed color. And I wasn't going to do that. I don't remember. Uh, <laughs> but I had not enough, I believe, to finish a row. And so I finished it off. And it's well over, I think, seven feet long and over three feet wide. I don't actually have, like I said, I threw it in the dryer, so it's not on me at the moment, so I can't really measure it, but it is huge. It should be something that will last a while, I hope. And so I made it extra long because even though he has the bunk bed now, he might not always have a bunk bed, so just in case he needs that little extra oomph to get over a thicker mattress and box spring or something, because right now he doesn't have a box spring. He just got the bunk board, uh, what do they call it, buddy boards or something. Um, so yeah, he's just got that for his bed. Well, and the mattress, but I'm just saying he doesn't have a super like thick mattress or something. <laughs> uh, yeah, that is done. I worked it with an eye hook, and I've done just a basic chevron. I actually heard that Sorry, there's a fly. <laughs> I actually heard that a lot of people have trouble doing chevrons, and I, didn't, I guess I was looking for your input into what you are struggling with with the chevron stitch, because I've never had trouble working it. I do a really simple chevron stitch, so I find it super easy to count and to keep track of where I'm at. How I do my chevron is I just do the amount up and down, of course, is the same, and then I skip two stitches in between. And have three stitches in my center or the peak of my chevron. Sorry, trying to hit the fly. Probably unsuccessfully. <laughs> um, but yeah, so uh, for this particular one, oh uh, no, I can't even remember the that or the amount that I used. I think I used. A 10 stitch so five stitches with the um, center three double crochet so in total it's really a 12 stitch chevron 11 13 geez I can't do math <laughs> it would be 10 plus 2 plus 1 so 13 stitches in my chevron um, but yeah I don't find it difficult and I guess you could just mark each one of your peaks if you really wanted to. This had, I think, 11 peaks across it, but that seems like a lot of work for stitch marking, moving, and stuff. And so, yeah, if you have, if you would like any help with the chevron stitch, and I guess there are chevron stitches that are more solid, and I don't really prefer to do it that way because I like having the little hole so that I can count easier <laughs> and have it more mindless. So maybe it's people that are just doing the more solid stitch or I guess, I don't know. If you want to help me out to help understand where you're struggling with this stitch because I find it super easy. I know Holly from Yarn Journey was talking about how she finally was getting a hold of the chevron stitch for a blanket she was making for her sister so yeah that's and I've heard it from other people too because like we were at Taekwondo and the receptionist person there she was saying how she never could get the handle of the chevron stitch and I'm just like it's not a hard stitch <laughs> at least I've never found it that way it was one of those stitches I did not pick up until I was older because it was one of those stitches my mom would not do and so therefore I actually picked it up originally probably from my grandma. I mean my grandma did all sorts of chevrons. She usually did a single crochet and oh my gosh the stuff that she made from it. They did not care what yarn they used with what yarn. So I have stuff that is anywhere from like a probably sport weight to a worsted weight that is just all mixed together and you know in those great 70s colors and it just it it makes me laugh so much because it was just how different the times have changed and people are 
you have to match everything now and you know everything has to go together and have the same colors and things and I don't know it's just it, it kind of cracks me up to see the differences in the times and even though this blanket because it is snow cone stand and uses a lot of what I would call 70s ish colors the thing that I saw it was somebody who had it listed on Etsy said that the colors in this were I think blue orange plum and green and I guess I can kind of see the plum I would not call it plum I think the purple is I guess deeper than what I would call plum but um, the green is definitely not green <laughs> like I would definitely go more on the side of mint or something uh, but green you know I think green as grass and this is not grass green or leaf green or anything like that but yeah so that is my one blanket down and one to go and wow there's there's a lot of background we'll see if any of this I can actually use <laughs> and yeah so we'll move on to our next finished object okay well surprisingly I listened back to that little thick clip and there is not as much background as I thought there would be and Zayn has now escaped his um, detainer because <laughs> I know he can get out of it but he was he wanted to be in it so I let him be in it and so now he's running free and I don't know it's really really loud what they're doing but this microphone is not picking them up really loud maybe it'll sound a lot worse when I have to amplify this because this microphone just records really softly <laughs> but yeah anyways moving on to fo number five so this one I actually only got into a couple cows and it was mainly for Katrina's creations tote along which was over the summer well I guess it wasn't the entire summer so maybe it was June July August uh, but I knew that I was or had planned on doing a tote for that I had actually started it a couple times and a couple different things and just never liked the patterns or the materials that I was working with because I know I had originally started something back in the land of uh, plants for uh, that cow's thing so that I could get my double entries. Zane! Yeah, you play with it. You play with it. <clears throat> but yeah, so I had started it way back then and I thought well, nothing I ever did stuck around and then I finally I was like, well, I have to pick something now because it's you know end of stash dash end of all the cows <laughs> and so I finally I picked a pattern and I started doing it and I still didn't like it and so I made up my own pattern as is the theme with the section and yes there is something in my FOs that is actually something I use from a pattern <laughs> but pretty much yeah I guess there's a couple things that I finished off in the month of August that were from patterns but a lot of stuff was not <laughs> so what I had done is I basically did a well what it turned out to be was a 20 by 40 base although when I did the base of it was 18 stitches by 40 rows and then I single crocheted around that which made it the 20 by 40 maybe I only did 32 or 38 rows so I added you know a row or whatever with the single crochet and then I single crocheted in the back loop or did I do a post I think I did a post stitch around the that edging that I did with the red and then I went to this Christmas yarn because this yarn I have in like a one pound or something 14 ounce maybe it's 12 ounce because it was the multicolor I had gotten this in like a three pack kit that Hobby Lobby used to sell so this is old old stuff because it came in with like a pattern book and stuff and you got two different 
or two different. You got three different colors, and I don't remember what the third color was with this because it was a Christmassy theme. And so I got this one. I got like a sparkly red one, which was what I was going to use, but I couldn't find that. So I don't think I used that in something, but I didn't find it. So I decided I'd just go to this one. And yeah, like I said, I don't know what the other color was in this pack because it would have had to have been like another Christmas multi or something. But anyways, so... Yeah, this is all sugars and cream, or at least to the best of my knowledge. <laughs> um, and then I basically, for the rest of it, alternated between half double and single crochet rows. And that was, I was going to do like a meshier top to it, so that would, I thought it would go faster, but when I was kind of trying that out it didn't actually crochet faster for me so then I just kind of left that out and how I did the sides was you know I said that it started off at a 20 base and by the top it was only an eight stitch base on each side Zane out of the cupboards out of the kitchen babu thank you careful uh, so yeah, so I would decrease two stitches every third row that I did the half double crochet. And the only reason I did it on the half double instead of the single crochet was because I wanted to be actually able to tell where I was uh, doing my decreases. Because, like I said, I was running out of time and I wanted to be able to tell because I didn't have any stitch markers with me or anything. And... I just needed to be able to go, oh, that's the row I did it, so I did how many rows since then? <laughs> so it was just to make it more mindless. Ideally, if I wrote this pattern, I probably would have done the decreases differently, or at least placed them in a different row than they were. But yeah, I did that so that it would kind of close in on itself. And then, of course, I did the strap for it in the same color as the bottom. And yeah, so that is basically, I guess, it for my tote. And yes, the prizes were drawn for this too, and I did not win that one either. But there was, I think Crafting and Treats had a bag along or something. I'm not sure what the end date was for that, but I was able to get it into that one, as well as all the other things that are multi-projects that haven't actually pulled prizes yet. So we'll cross our fingers that maybe this will win a prize in something. <laughs> but otherwise it wasn't like something I made that I can use for much of anything I'll probably use it to keep like Christmas goodies in when we actually get to Christmas but as of right now it just doesn't have a purpose and that's not usually the way that I crochet but like I said just trying to get all the cows done so that is why I made this one okay on to I think this is fo number six hopefully. Uh, this was something that I actually made four of, and these are Easter Marshmallow Bunnies. I made these for the 80s Cal, which actually has been extended. It was to end on August 26th, and I think it's through the entire month of September now. I don't remember. I've made my project, so I'm not going to be too concerned. <laughs> um, but, yeah, so I had made four of these bunnies so one for each of my boys which jeremy forget that you heard that um, for next easter jeremy's back upstairs now uh but i had made them in fun bright colors since that was kind of the theme with the 80s cow that a lot of people were going with and i made mine in robin's egg and super duper yellow because how more 80s can you get than super duper <laughs> as well as neon orange and neon green and I kind of made all their ears a little bit different so they didn't all sit exactly the same because I thought that was just kind of fun and different and it took a little fiddling with but it wasn't all that difficult and these were a nice little stash buster although I don't think that these make a really great uh, craft stall like project or something because even though the actual bunny because you make 
two sides and then sew it together. So the bunny itself only takes like 20 minutes to crochet. So approximately 10 minutes per side. But then the sewing it together took me forever. Okay, so I timed it out and each one was approximately 20 minutes to sew up. <laughs> so all together, 40 minutes, which is the same time that takes me to make my washcloths. And yeah, those are our $5 items. And I cannot picture somebody wanting, wanting these little marshmallow bunnies for $5. <laughs> as cute as they are, I don't think they're $5 worth. Uh, they're only like maybe three inches tall with the ears and like an inch and a quarter wide or something. They're, they're just not super tall and yeah, they're just not all that big and the pattern is not written in a way that it would be super easy to just make them larger. I guess you could just use bigger yarn and that might do it or even two strands. Maybe I should try that sometime because on a larger hook because that way you would get the uh, a larger bunny without taking more time or at least ideally and that might make it a little more worth the time and effort. But like I said, this is for my kids, so I don't really care. But I don't think I will, I don't know, maybe I'll add them to the Etsy shop and see if anyone's interested. Which, by the way, is still on vacation. I do have the plans to get it open, hopefully by the end of this week. But we'll just have to wait and see. And I worked these, I believe, with an e-hook, and I did all of these in... Karen Simply Soft colors. So all those colors that I named before were all Simply Soft. They're all yarn that I've had laying around since before we moved because I have not bought any Simply Soft since we moved into this house, which was over two years ago because I moved when I was pregnant with the twins. Yeah, we bought this house before we knew we were expecting twins. We knew we were expecting another child, <laughs> but by the time uh, before we closed, we had found out that it was twins. But before, or when we put the offer down, we thought we were just having another child. <laughs> but anyways, yeah, so those were my Easter marshmallow bunnies. And they are just stuffed with, you know, a typical fiber fill that is sitting next to my computer. So super easy to stuff them in quick. And then my at least last FO that I can think of for the moment and... Like I said, this podcast is already going to be long enough, so we're just going to call it the FO Show, <laughs> and we'll get to all the other things going on in future episodes. But my last FO is the McKenley's Springtime Hat. This is something that came up when I did a search for chemo caps, and what was suggested in that was that you add an extra round to the increase. And I also went up a hook size or a couple hook sizes. And so I actually used an eye hook. And I'm not sure what the recommended hook was, but I'm pretty sure I used an eye hook. And I'm pretty sure that I did an extra round of increase. But I don't know if I did any extra lengthening to it. Oh, too many things at the end of the month that I'm forgetting. Uh, this was, of course, as always, for the monthly hat project for August and that project was to make a gift hat and so I was also doing this for the Cody Knits podcast chemo hat along so I will be donating this hat it is made out of yarn bees aspen I think aspen a spin I don't remember how you say it um, which is a acrylic alpaca blend. I think it was 80-20 because I think it is a little more than the touch of alpaca. It is way nicer feeling than the touch of alpaca and like the uh, alpaca. I I know Holly mentioned using the touch of alpaca in her last podcast too or one or two ago and I agree with her. The touch of alpaca is kind of an itchy alpaca. I don't know if it's the acrylic in it is itchy or if the alpaca just didn't like blend into the acrylic as much as they wanted it to but I'm like wearing my Montreal 
jacket right now when the air comes on. Like, I just throw it over my shoulders when the air comes on and throw it back off when the air goes off. And it's it's just a lot scratchier uh, and yarn than a lot of the other alpacas I've used. So if you're using... Jeremy, can you help the babies? So if you are using Touch of Alpaca, don't base your alpaca experience on that yarn. As much as I like Lion Brand yarns, I don't think the Touch of Alpaca was one of their one of their higher end yarns that they've ever done. I've I've much enjoyed my other alpacas that I've used. Although most of those have used a higher percentage of alpaca in them. Like I have I don't remember what that brand name is. It's like Sigia or something. Um, that's a 50, 50 with, I think, Merino. I think it was wool. I'm not sure if it was Merino or if it was just wool, but that's a 50, 50. And that, I can't even tell that there's like a pack in it other than the stuff I made feels like really super nice. And then, because that was the yarn I used for the Land of Alpacas. And then I have 100% alpaca, which is just lovely, lovely, lovely stuff. I haven't actually made anything with it yet, but I have it. And then, what's the other alpaca? Oh, I have the a spin or whatever, which is the 20%, which, like I said, is just a nicer feeling alpaca than the touch of alpaca. But anyways, back to the chemo cap that I made. Um... Yeah, I made it. It does fit my head, which is small for a woman's head. And then I didn't make it super long or anything either because I figure this isn't going to be going on someone's head that needs to get over a lump of hair or anything. So I figured on the smaller side would be better. I've already gotten compliments from the cows that I've entered it into. There was also the... Uh, oh, back to the bunnies. Those were also entered into the tortoise versus hare, which is in three different Ravelry groups, as well as, which is in Penhook and Needles, uh, Crochet and Hoovians, and Comforting Crafts, I think is the third one. She doesn't have a podcast, but all the other ones have a podcast. Um, but yeah, like I said, this springtime chemo cap or it's really a girl's size hat and then it had the instructions to upsize it um, as I was making it for Cody Knits and my one in why can I not ever remember which group that is I can think of the podcaster it's the fiber for the people <laughs> um, group but I can't think of what her podcast is called um but yeah, her her cows are a hat for each month, and that month was the gift. And then I entered it, maybe, I haven't had official word if it qualifies, into the Red Along, which is also in Penhook and Needle. Yeah, Penhooks and Needles, which is the one of the groups that was doing the tortoise versus hare, which is why that came up. <laughs> um... Yeah, so hopefully that will get me somewhere with that. I probably am going to finish up using this yarn. It was in, I think the color is called Rose Peaks or something. When we had seen it in Hobby Lobby, it was one of those clearance yarns. And me and my son thought it was red and black. And we didn't really check the colorway name, <laughs> which we probably should have done because we would have known it was pink. But in their lighting... And, you know, the shelving blocking all the lighting. It looked red, and yeah, we got home, and it was definitely pink. So I decided I would make that as my donation thing, if it's a charity that I think will accept it. Because, obviously, it's not going to work for my intended purposes, because Sam doesn't want pink. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so I have... That hat done. I still have, I think that was 77 grams, if I remember correctly, from my stash dash totaling. And I think they're 100 gram skeins, so I still have two more full skeins and then that other 83, 83, 23 grams or so 
Uh, so 220 grams, approximately. And this month's hat is for a cabled hat. So I'll probably try, although you're not really supposed to use a packer for cables. But since it's only at 20%, I guess I'm going to try and make a cabled hat out of this yarn too. So I can also send that over to Cody Knits as I might as well use this yarn and get it out of here since it's not going to work for what I wanted it for. Oh, so I lied. I have one more finished object. So I guess, what's that make this? FO number eight. I have my lacy, spring, lacy swing cardigan. Sorry. <laughs> it got really loud again as soon as I decided that I was going to record. Um, my lacy swing cardigan that I made for one of my friends. I actually, I was going to mail this to her, but then I remembered that she's going to come and visit me again at the end of this month, so I might just hold on to it till then, but of course then I can't get a actual modeled photo of it. But this is a pattern that I've already worked in a larger size that I made for myself, and then she had seen it and mentioned something about how it would look nice in purples. So I had gotten it, I had gotten this yarn because it was a purple dip dyed. I thought that would look really pretty. And then when I got it and started working with it, it's definitely a lot pinker than I thought it would be. So I call it, I call it my purple <laughs> with a question mark. And yeah, this was one of those items. Guys, <laughs> I was racing to finish for the uh, Crafty Chats uh, 50k subscriber along, which again... She has drawn winners, and no, we did not win, <laughs> but that's okay. We did get this little gift present done, and I will be able to give it to its recipient, hopefully, by the end of this month. And it turned out a lot better than I thought it would. Like, I thought, because it was dip-dyed, that the color progressions would be a lot slower, or, you know, you know, I thought or I guess faster. I thought the colors would just kind of melt into each other and it would be a really quick progression because I'm just thinking of dip dyed yarns and how, you know, that's your 100 gram skein is darker on one end and then lighter on the other end, but, you know, it's hinked up or whatever when they dip dye it, so it's not like these long segments of this color striping like I would call this color striping not dip dyed um, but yeah so I did finish this I like it a lot better than I thought I was going to and then there were some little things that I discovered like towards the end of making it that I screwed up on like I made the armhole just slightly larger and whereas I remembered to add stitches for it during the actual final around the entire item numbers, I did not remember to add just those couple of stitches around my, uh, I guess, under the bust line or around the bust line. It's a good thing it's an open cardigan, so it really isn't too important, and it's only like four stitches or something, but yeah, totally forgot to add that in. And this yarn is, or this pattern is made for the Cotton Fair yarn, which is a Premier yarn, so it is a Premier pattern that I had downloaded originally off Hirschner's site, and then you can just get it on the Premier site, though. Uh, I believe I still use the recommended hook size, which I can't remember right offhand what that is, but I'm going to guess it's either like a G or an E hook. Leo, what's the matter? Um, life isn't fair, guys. <laughs> uh, Sam, will you let Sona out before it starts raining? It looks like it's going to start storming. Um, but yeah, so that is my Lacey Swing card again. So I did get this entered into several sweater alongs, but I could not put it into the Rhinebeck alongs because, of course, those are all for sweaters that you make yourself. So just a hint, that might be something that you might see in my next podcast, which will be all about my whips. Oh, and you probably would like to know what kind of yarn I use. This dip dyed yarn was the Snuggly Wuggly, which is by Loops and Thread. I had gotten this when uh, Michaels had done their 40% off any anything on online orders 
I think that was, they also had it in store for, maybe it was just all yarns, I don't remember. But back at the end of April, and I actually got the yarn at the beginning of May, but so I had to get three at a time, and so I had gotten this, and I decided, you know, I had planned that I would make my friend a sweater, and then if I liked how that came out, I would go ahead and, because the blue colorway was supposed to be available in my local store, but the purple was not, so I, that's why I had ordered the purple. And I figured that I would need, like, probably a little over two uh, skeins to make her something, and it did not even take up two. So I was really impressed that this yarn, at least in this particular um, skein job, <laughs> uh, I don't know what you would, how to say it. In these skeins, they seem to be fairly heavy because from my calculations, I had like 223 or 200 and some grams in that sweater and I was still only on ball two and there was quite a bit of ball two still left so yeah pretty pretty good since you know I think they were supposed to be a hundred gram or maybe that particular bundle that I got was larger um, but yeah so that is I think all of the finished objects, I hope, since I've already interrupted myself once. And now we can get back to my closing information for you. <laughs> so yeah, guys, basically, if you hadn't guessed, the kids have started school. So things are super busy here. I have not gotten my Etsy shop back up and running, like I mentioned earlier. But I do have hopes that I will get to it now that all the cows are done and I'm back to trying to come up with new projects for new cows. Because, <laughs> of course, we have all our fall things starting now. Uh, but, yeah. So, since we have all that stuff starting and all that other stuff has ended, I'm hoping that by the end of this week, I will be able to at least get some things back up and running and at least with a few items. Probably not my full shop, but at least a few things. And yeah, things are just busy. I have a lot of whips that I've started, or at least a couple whips that I've started, as well as I've made a few purchases in the last little while. So I'll probably get another uh, episode up next week with what I'm planning and working on currently for whips. And then another post or podcast up in the near future with all the indie dyed yarns that I've accumulated over the summer. And some of that's already gone into projects, but I thought, you know, since I have it all now and I did make a purchase today because I found out that Jinx Yarn is stopping or she's going out of the dyeing business, so I may have made a purchase tonight. <laughs> um as well as uh, I've purchased from Leading Men and I've purchased from Queen's Yarn Boutique and I've purchased from Gnome Acres when they were going out of business and I'm forgetting one. Oh, Crystal Skies Hand Dyed, which I briefly, I think, mentioned in a podcast unless that got in the podcast that were deleted. So I've decided I'm just going to throw all of those things into one stash enhancement podcast for you guys so that you guys that don't like to see all that don't have to. And I will make the disclaimer that a lot of that I got on sale. So, oh, and Once Upon a Corgi, that was another one that I purchased from. <laughs> um, a lot of them I purchased from either in person or on sale. So they were not full priced or they were going out of business because that's pretty much right now what I've decided that I have to limit my purchasing to is those special things. But anyway, guys, I really need to get to my boys and I got this all recorded in one day. So yay me. <laughs> uh, as always, you can find me on the social media as either Hooked on Most, which is H-O-O-K-E-D-O-N-M-O-E-Z, as well as Moe's Crochet, which is M-O-E-S-C-R-O-C-H-E-T, 
if I spelled that right. <laughs> uh, distractions, but yeah. So I'm Most Crochet on Instagram, Ravelry, and you can type in either things .etsy.com to find my shop. And I am Hooked on Moe's on Facebook. And yeah, we will talk to you very soon. And as always, guys, if you liked this episode, I would appreciate it if you would hook the like button and subscribe. Talk to you later, guys.